Hello everybody, this is Justin K. Prim with the Gem Cutters Craft, and today I had a funny situation happen. I'm currently working on a stone from my new gemstone design book, The Secret Teachings of Gem Cutting, and I realized as after I finished the crown, uh, I cut this side, and then I went to go do my transfer and realized this design doesn't have a zero degrees table. The last two facets are five degrees. It's kind of like an opposed bar cut, but with no middle flat bit. So when I tried to glue dop here, I don't know if you can see very clearly, the stone's tilted by five degrees. It's a little bit crooked. So I already had it on the glue and I just left it there because I didn't know what else to do. But upon further consideration, I realized it's not gonna be possible to cut the stone like this because this side's tilted down, this side's tilted up, and these two sides are just crooked. So that means I'm gonna have to have crazy facet index and angle numbers adjusted on every side. I don't wanna do that. So what I've realized I'm gonna have to do is a wax transfer, which I've never done. So I thought I'll just make a little video about this and if I completely fail and blunder, you guys can laugh at me on camera. So let's try this. I'm going to bit first uh, take this off the glue dop so I can get it flame. This is my normal technique for releasing the Loctite glue. Just heat up the dop as long as your stone isn't heat sensitive. This is amethyst, so it should be fine. Just heat up the dop and after about 30 seconds, the glue will stop sticking. And I can try it every once in a while with some light pressure and just see. While this glue is coming unstuck, I'll just take a moment to remind you that if you are interested in rocking one of these lapidary t-shirts, they are for sale on my website, storemagusgems.com. There's like 10 different lapidary designs from this sweet um, 1960s Ultratech to a 1609 Czech handpiece, to a Sri Lankan machine, to an old-fashioned French 1800s um, gem cutter. Wow, this stuff just really doesn't want to come off today. Normally, it just, there we go. Okay, so, okay, we have it off the glue. Let it cool down for a second so I can drop it in the acetone and just clean that off. In the meantime, let me just move this out of here and I will prepare my wax dop. This one's looking pretty good. It's got wax on it from a previous time. And that dop's pretty hot. Okay, so let me just prep this. Just so it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna prep the the wax so that whenever this stone is clean again. I've never done a wax transfer, but I've seen other people do it. Uh, all the jam peg cutters do it because they don't use glue. So I know it's possible. Um, but let's see how I can do it. Okay, that's a nice dop prepped. The metal of the dop ends here, the wax goes up here, it's very tall. So I've got lots of room to push the stone into and tweak it with. Okay, so that's done. Let's see, stone's still a little bit warm. This is my acetone. I'm just gonna cool the stone down in my hands real quick. If I drop it into the acetone while it's hot, it can shock the stone and that could possibly break it. I've never seen it happen, but I hope I never do. So I'm just gonna let it cool down for a second in the paper towel. 
And then once I put it into the acetone, it literally takes about a minute in order for the acetone to dissolve the glue. So then I can, I don't even really need to get this glue off, but I'd like to just clearly see what I'm doing um, instead of just waxing on top of glue. It, it doesn't actually matter. It's not gonna change anything about what I'm doing, but I, I'd rather just be cleaner if I can. Okay, so this is now nice and cool and we can see a bit about just the glue that's still on there. So I'm just gonna take that off with a little acetone. Gonna swirl it around a little bit. Okay, so about a minute later, the acetone has dissolved the glue. Can put that away. And let's see what is revealed. Okay, so I know this isn't gonna be super clear, but yeah, right there, you can kind of see there is some long rectangular facets. It's kind of like the opposed bar cut, but it's a different, uh, older version of that cut called just the bar cut. And it has no table. So what I need to do is wax this together with that. And then by eye, I'm going to make all my adjustments. So let's see if I can get it right on the first try. Okay, so I already have my dot waxed, it's prepped, it's ready to go. I would like to have a nice grip on that big stone. I cut crown first, so I'm going to be uh, dopping this wax onto the crown side so that I can recut the uh, the pavilion side of this crudely cut amethyst. So I'm gonna just first heat up my stone just so I can get it warm so that the wax will stick. You can't wax dop to a cold stone, it doesn't work. Okay, so now press the wax, the hot wax, into the table, or what, what should have been the table on a normal design. It's on there, not pretty, so I just need to, I just need to even it out a little bit, make the wax stopping nicer, and center it. And it's pretty hot, so maybe I'll use some tweezers. get real deep into the wax there so that it's a nice strong bond. Now the tricky part about this, or at least what I think is going to be the tricky part about this is I can't let the wax come up over the girdle line because my crown side girdle line is the only thing that can show me when the stone is straight. Right now, the girdle's very crooked because the bottom of the stone and the top of the stone weren't straight. And when I cut the top perfectly straight, the bottom now is at a funny angle. So I can't even look at the girdle line from the bottom of the stone. Only my top side girdle line here. And I definitely can't look at the shape of the pavilion or anything because it's all crooked and it's not gonna help me. So uh, first though, I just need to make my shape of my wax better. I want a nice strong bond. So I always say it should look like an ice cream cone. It shouldn't have an L bend in it or anything. It should be nice and smooth. Uh, you want the wax to be strong. And, and, and of course the stone needs to be centered in the wax. But I can't let any of the wax come up over any of the, the, the girdle. Otherwise I won't be able to see what I'm doing. So that's a pretty decent dop, dopping. It's not centered yet and it's it's not balanced at all, but you can just see the, the sort of slight taper. I um, can smooth it out a little bit with my fingers, but it's kind of roughly a kind of ice cream cone. Okay, so now the tricky part is seeing straightness. And again, I'm, I'm just looking at the bottom side girdle line, which isn't that easy to see, especially on such a light stone. 
I can see the straightness of the dop and the dop holder, and I can see roughly the perpendicularness of the stone. So let us really look closely. And the beauty of wax is if I start cutting and realize that I did this wrong, I can always adjust it slightly. Now, in this handheld thing, uh, I think it's pretty straight, but it's not that easy to tell. It's gonna be easier for me if I do it in the handpiece, because the handpiece I can spin consistently. So I'm just gonna tighten this in there, and now, As I turn it, I can see it's not straight yet. It's close, but it's not good enough. So I'm just gonna heat this up a little bit more, just so my wax gets a little bit more malleable. So the hard thing is really, what's my reference point here? How do I see straightness? I mean, if it's really crooked, it's obvious, but if it's subtly crooked, it's not that apparent as to what makes it a straight line. I think that's it. Okay, check it out, see if you can see anything. As I spin it, I it's very hard for you to tell where's the bottom because the lighting is so um, subtle. Okay, I think that's it. The only way I can really know now is once I start cutting, if I see that some sides come in crooked and some, some sides come in straight, I might have to go back and just very slightly touch, push down here or push down here or whatever I see. But it, as far as I can tell, it looks like a pretty solid and straight transfer and centered. So I'm not gonna have a problem left to right with um, balanced facets. So Okay, so I just, Checked it, it's almost good, but not quite. So I cut in my first steps of the four sides. You can see how they look frosty, frosty, frosty. And on these two sides, I don't know if you can tell, but the girdle line, yeah, is coming in very straight, parallel. So I did good, but tilt it up to the left. And if we flip it around, tilt it up to the right. So the stone is tilted that way a little bit. So I need to heat this up again and push it slightly that way so that when I cut my straight line girdle in, it's parallel. So let me do that. Okay, so let's adjust. So I need to tilt the stone slightly that way going to be tricky because I don't want to do this at all because that way is perfect. It's just that one that needs push. So I'm going to have to be super subtle. So just double checking. Yes, towards me. Okay, so just heat this up a little bit. Not too much because I don't want it to move. And not heated up enough. Okay, it moved a slight, slight bit. I'll check it out and see what happened. Okay, I had to go back and adjust it like five more times to get the perfect balance inside of the wax, but in the end, I did do it. So here, you can see nice parallel girdle line. 
nice parallel girdle line. Nice parallel girdle line. And nice parallel girdle line. So it took about 10 minutes of heating this up, slightly pushing it, cutting a little bit more on that facet and then going back and, and adjusting it again. But in the end, it wasn't too hard. The hardest part is really just figuring out how hard you're pushing it and how much it needs to go. But I just did it little by little and eventually it got there. One time I went too far, pushed it too far and then I had to go back, but it's balanced now. And I feel confident and safe that if I continue to cut the stone, the girdle line's gonna come in straight and then I don't have to worry about alignment issues. I just have to now cut the stone. So if you ever find yourself in a position like this where for whatever reason you can't transfer into your second top with glue the way that maybe you usually do, which is the way that I usually do, um, you might wanna try this technique, simply eyeballing it, testing it, and checking to see if it works. Luckily for me on this stone, I had quite a bit of a thick girdle because I had resized the stone a little bit because I knew I needed a little bit more height. So I had some extra girdle to cut into, which is how I did my tests. If I had a razor thin girdle, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pull this off because I needed to cut into the girdle a little bit deeper to see if I was straight. And now that I know I'm straight, I can actually go down and make the girdle as thick as I need it to be. But if I didn't have that girdle to start with, it would have been very tricky to pull this off. So um, maybe you guys might find this useful if you ever need to do this kind of activity in the future. Um, so thanks so much for joining me and see you guys later on the Gem Cutters Craft.